Hey guys, it's Lauren here. Thanks for stopping by and checking out my latest project for the Hip Kit Club. Now I've been challenged today to do a mixed media layout incorporating a cut file, all my punches. And when I thought I haven't used punches in such a long time, I honestly can't remember. It would have been way years and years ago, way back in the old card making days. And so I thought I'm going to give the get out the punches, dust them off and give them a go and see what I come up with. So the other thing I was thinking about here, I had all these little bits and pieces left over from layouts that I'd, I had created using the kits uh, already and I thought I'm just going to have a little bit of fun doing some paper piecing which is just cutting pieces of paper into random sizes and pa placing them out over your background. I then will, I'm just placing them out, I'm, there's no rhyme or reason, I'm just putting, making sure I've got different patterns and my florals in different spots, different colours, so I'm not putting pink on pink and floral on floral, just sitting them around, I haven't measured any of the pieces, I'm just piecing them out and sitting them around and what that does, it creates kind of a bit of a custom background and I thought, I just really felt like doing this, often I'll do this in my art journal where I've got different tissue papers or um mixed media collage papers or I cut things out of magazines and put them into my um, you know, art journals and things like that. So I usually do this kind of technique in my art journals but I thought I'm just going to play around and do the same thing on this layout and see how it comes together. And as you can see just piecing them out I've got a cut, bit of a custom background there and it seems to be really coming together and bordering my photo. Um, I thought this was fun and um, just something different to try when usually I don't do this for as a starting point off for my mixed media layouts. So then I'm going to get out some of the Dina Wakely gel medium. What's it called? It's yeah, gel medium. It's a soft gel matte medium. And what this is, is I use it as an adhesive and also as a bit of a sealer. So as you can see, I'm I've gone supersonic here because to tell you the truth, this layout took us like probably in real time an hour and a half. So I go supersonic in some of these some processes throughout this video just because it you'd be sitting here for ages and you I'm sure you'd get sick of hearing my voice. So I've gone supersonic and I did that. So I just applied gel medium on the bottom, adhered the paper and applied gel medium over the top, which gave me that really nice smooth background and helped kind of really stick down that paper piecing on the bottom page. I've then grabbed the stencil from last month's colour kit, which was the exclusive Paige Evans one. I really like how intricate this stencil is and thought it'd be fun to add some more texture as a bit like to help my mixed media you know my mixed media job here for mixed media Monday and I'm just using a little bit of the whip spackle or you can use any form of texture paste or modeling paste to do this what I would suggest is if you're going to use like a gel medium or a modeling paste and you really wanted that white to really pop add some white acrylic paint to your medium and then you'll see that uh, design really kind of jump out off the pat pattern papers there so here I was just wanting to add some more texture I've got layers of paper there I've got florals and patterns and here I go I'm just wanting to add some more texture on the top and use some yummy mixed media goodiness and adding that stenciling there just did that I'm just going to spritz a little bit of this shimmers paint that came in a color kit a couple of months ago and add some splatters there and that really finishes off my mixed media component um, which is the formation of my background there you have it it's almost like a pattern piece of paper that you buy off the shelf but it's been really fun to make and a little bit time consuming because you're drying off between each stage but you know I was really happy with the result now here I am just doing some fussy cutting once again gone supersonic to save a bit of time um, I don't fussy cut that fast <laughs> and I've also started using some punches which is part of my challenge and that punch there I have a feeling might be a Martha Stewart one it's a sweet little flower and you can layer it up and get lots of different sort of dimension 
um, and, you know, sort of create different flowers. But perfectly, well, for what it was today, was I was able to punch these out and then layer them behind those gorgeous flowers on that peach paper there. That is a Dear Lizzie paper, really cute. And there is something about those leaves. I really think they are like an Australian gum leaf. So I really, this piece of paper, I've been fussy cutting it a fair bit. And I think it's because it's sort of resonating with me because it's a it's a leaf that is very familiar to me because it reminds me of an Australian gum tree leaf. And so I really like that. I like the colours of it, a bit of an Australian feel there with those colours as well. And so I've just laid those up and set them to side to dry. I've just used wet glue in between those layers. And I'm going to start working on my photo cluster and really trying to make sure that comes off the page. Here I am, I guess in a sense of mixed media, we don't only think of texture paste and sprays. We can also think about using different um, non-traditional kind of uh, products and here I have is I'm just going to do some ruffles across the um, bottom half of my photo on the background there using some white tissue paper. What this has done is not only added an extra dimension to my page or and texture with the ruffles, it has an stopped my photo getting lost in all that busyness that my background has become so it really makes it stand off gives it dimension and here I go supersonic again because I know you don't want to I'm sure you get the general gist of my my tissue paper ruffles there <laughs> But it looks really sweet. The white paper doesn't take away from the background. It sort of blends into the background. But what it helps me is to really make my photo a lovely big feature on my layout there. So there you go, fluffing it up. And there you go. As you can see, it's starting to really come together. Now, I'm going to jump on here and I'm thinking, okay, I, I want to add a bit more of that blue because I've got lots of pinks in there. I want to add a little bit more of my blue. So I'm pulling out another punch and this one here's like a little notepad one. And that one, I believe, is a Stampin' Up! one. So those two that you'll see in the corner, the little scalloped edge and this little one here I'm using right now, they are Stampin' Up! punches and I've had these punches forever. These, um, probably those three punches, plus another heart one, which I showed you earlier, which I don't end up using, um, I always have them in my Raskol beside my desk. Once again, it would be five years since I've used a punch, I'm sure of it. And uh, But they're always there because they're the good old faithfuls. You can't go wrong with a flower. You can't go wrong with a heart. You can't go wrong with a scalloped edge or this cute little note paper one there. I don't end up ruffling up that note paper at the edge, but I really um, think that when you ruffle it up, it looks like you've torn that piece of paper out of your notepad, which is a really cute kind of interactive sort of um making it as you know as, as though you've just torn this photo out and you've stick, stuck it on your layout it gives a bit of gives a bit of texture so I'm going to go back after um and it's kind of ruffle up the top there but you know I guess with all that texture I just when I was making I didn't even think of it but now watching this and doing this voiceover I'm thinking I'm going to tear those a bit and um, do that. So I've got my ruffles down the bottom, my white tissue paper. So that was a really create a lot of dimension, which when I set my photo on, it sort of dropped it back a bit because it like the bottom of it was sitting up higher than the top. So I double layered some foam tape on the top of that. So it would really sort of even out in its dimension across, across the page. So it, it has a bit of, you can tell it's kind of jumping up there um, even though it's difficult to tell as you can see um, from this perspective but in real life I assure you it really looks like the photo is standing out and um, is you know a real feature on the page now here are these gorgeous acetate these are exclusive to the hip kit club uh, May kits um, the acetate butterflies you can layer them up and you can I've, you can fold them in half and make their little wings pop up which look like they're coming uh, coming alive and I just really wanted to have a play with them so here I am I'm just going to sit some of those out as you can see I just placed those flowers that I'd fussy cut um, in those special spots on my 
on my layout there because that's where I thought I'm going to I'm going to put them and I really wanted to be thinking about my title at this point as well where that's going to go even though I've got that happy mother's day on the photo uh, this photo is Katie and I and obviously little Elsa our much loved pooch um on Mother's Day, Katie grabbed my phone and she fired up Snapchat, which Snapchat's not something I'm very good at or um, like I don't know too much about it. I just try and get on there as best I can to um, be a cool mum and try and track down the kids when I need to. <laughs> Um, but so I'm trying to navigate that, but Katie's navigated it very well. And so she puts these filters on and we had on Mother's Day, we just had some selfie fun and it was, um, really cute. It, it actually made me look, they look, made, these filters made me look a lot younger. So I was having a really good time <laughs> playing with these filters with Katie and we got a few snapshots and it was lovely that the Mother's Day uh, scripty font was sort of incorporated into some of those filters and we've got these beautiful photos of us together. It sort of, um, these filters just give me a little glimpse of what Katie might look like as she gets older and into her teenage years. Um, so yeah, do you guys, do you guys use is Snapchat a big thing for you guys? Do you play around with these filters? And, you know, I think this is just sort of a world that is, um, you know, not, not the, like, I don't feel like I'm overly confident in, um, not like the kids, uh, makes me feel a little bit old, but you know, is, is Snapchat a form of social media that you use? Because if scrappers are using it, I probably should get into it. Um, and to connect with you all in different ways. Uh, so let me know, what do you think of Snapchat? Should I spend a bit more time getting confident with it or should I invest my, my, um, invest my time in other forms of social media or in other activities? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love your thoughts or any tips and tricks on how to make Snapchat easy to use. That would be good. <laughs> Um, so here I am. I'm just sticking things down now. I've got this uh, wet glue. It's a Tombow. It's called Tombow Mono Liquid Glue. It, um, when you squeeze it out, it's white, but it dries clear. So that's really good. I love it because the tip's quite fine, but it doesn't clog. And that's what I was really finding when I was using those fine line applicators. I couldn't, uh, it was just, I was wasting them because I, they would just always clog. So this seems to be a happy medium and um, yeah, so I've just adhered those down. I fluff, well, I haven't fluffed up the acetate because they're quite sturdy, but I folded the acetate in half so those wings popped up and adhered the centers. And here I am just using some cardstock stickers to add another little feature in the corner there. What I noticed is that Katie and I were wearing black shirts and when you're doing a layout like this and it's just all pastel, I really, I know it's scary. Black is scary. It, it's scary for me anyway. But I just, I think it's so important. And when I do it, I know it really grounds and balances my layout is to add some black elements on there. So I use that little black sticker down the side, the black camera, the black in the word love. And that just sort of ties that darker element in. It helps border the photo. And although it's scary when you're doing it because it's black and black's really strong and it's not pastel and, you know, kind of freaking it freaks me out. <laughs> although it's a little bit nerve wracking when doing it, when you do it and you look back and your layout's complete, it really holds and sort of grounds your layout. So I suggest if you're frightened of black like I am, just have a go. Just have a go at placing a few black elements around your layout and see how it goes. Um, and I guarantee you, I think like this layout, you'll be feeling, okay, black, black is not the enemy. Black is just someone different. <laughs> we'll go from there. How cute are these tiny little puffy stickers? They are so high up on my hoarding list. But one thing I have learned in all this beautiful hip kit club family process, kit deliveries, everything is that I'm getting another kit really, really soon. And then this will go into my kit busting stage, but 
I'm so caught up with the new kit that I might not get back to it. So I really said to myself, Lauren, put it aside, get in there and use those super cute little puffy stickers and make this layout something magical. And that's what I've done. So I really hope you like this layout. Check out the Hip Kit Club. It is just the most amazing family. All the details are linked below in the comments. So check that out there. Say hi to me um, and I'm going to be back again really soon with a new layout. All right, guys, take care. Bye.